We praise you, Father. We praise you, Son. We praise you, Spirit. All three in one. Once again, we praise you, Father. Clap your hand. We praise you, Son. We praise you, Spirit. All three in one. We lift our hands. We lift our hands to praise your name to all the world. To all proclaim this unity, this unity, our Trinity. Our Trinity, we bow, we bow before this mystery. Clap your hand. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Son. We praise you, Spirit. All three in one. One more time. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Son. We praise you, Spirit. All three in one. Shall we kneel down? O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and all Sacrament most holy, oh sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be. presence of Jesus. You could gently be seated. If you want to kneel, you can kneel down. Jesus is present, is here. Do not get distracted. This is the moment of praises and after a moment we will enter the moment of worship. Keep your heart unto the law. Keep your mind and your thoughts only to the law. Keep everything to Jesus who is present here. D. I'll sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh. I'll 
I'll sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I'll give glory to your name. I'll give glory to your name, Father, Father, glory to your name, Father, Father, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I'll give glory to your name. I'll give glory to your name, Father, Father, glory to your name, Father, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I will magnify your name, raise your hand. I will magnify your name, Jesus, Jesus, magnify your name, Jesus, for your name, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I will magnify your name, I will magnify your name. Jesus, magnify your name. Jesus, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I'll give honor to your name. I'll give honor to your name. Spirit, spirit. Honor to your name, Spirit, Spirit. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I'll give honor to your name, Spirit. Honor to your For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Let's be in silence as we have entered a deeper and deeper moment with the Lord. A deeper time of worship that the Lord is inviting you to be closer and closer with Him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, dear brothers and sisters. As we have come, the time of worshipping our God, let us open our hearts and minds, my dear brothers and sisters. As we are in the presence of our mighty God, as Matthew 18, 20 says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I would be there in the midst of them. Yes, the Lord, we truly believe 
that you are present here in the midst of each one of us gathered here this morning to worship you, to glorify you, to magnify you, O Lord. As your word says in John 4, 24, the Lord is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes, dear Lord, our Father, we are here to worship you, to glorify you, to magnify your mighty name, our Father. As when Moses went up the mountain, the Lord spoke to him. Father God spoke to him and said, Remove your sandals, for where you stand is holy. Yes, the Lord, for where we are present here right now, it is your holy ground, O oh Father God. And we are here in the midst of you, in the presence of you, O oh God, thanking you and worshipping you in spirit and in truth. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, let us sing more love. Mola Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All glory and honor belongs to you, Lord Jesus. As we come into your mighty presence, welcoming the Holy Spirit, let us invoke the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, as we call upon the Holy Spirit to be in the midst of each one of us, to come upon us right now, to fill us, yes, the Lord Jesus. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord Jesus, that we may be filled with power, power from above, our Father, that we may be witnesses to glorify you, O oh Lord Jesus, all the days of our lives and forever. As John the Baptist said, I am baptizing you with water, but the one who is coming will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord Jesus, thank you for sending us your Spirit where we could come to be witnesses to you to the ends of the earth, not only in our families, in, among our friends, our relatives, but to the ends of the earth. And we know, oh Lord, that your Spirit will lead us and guide us 
in the path of the truth where the truth will set us free yes my brothers and sisters as we are in the presence of god let us ask the spirit to lead and guide us every step we take and every move we make closer to the lord that we may be led closer and closer to him as the word of god says we may decrease that he may increase in us yes the lord let your spirit may fill us and use us in a mighty way for the glory of thy kingdom lord jesus as we sing the song spirit of the living god lift your hands up fall afresh on us spirit of the living god fall afresh Lift both hands now. If we have pain in one hand, lift both hands and praise the Lord. Your pain is going away. The presence of Jesus, His presence is filling this area, is filling this church, is filling each bench, each row. It's up to you if you need to ask. For your healing, it's up to you who needs to invite and open yes, the door Lord, of your heart Lord, and invite Jesus inside. Yes, so Lord. just open your hearts, open your mouths as we give Him the glory, the honor of praises. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit you need to stand up if you're having pain on your legs if you're having any problem that is stopping you from standing or some family problem that is putting you into heavy depression or whatever is it you're going to stand up and say sing this hymn of faith sing this hymn of fire sing, sing this hymn of healing that my family my children my neighbors or whatever is the situation around you or circumstances you're going to place somebody who you do not like you're going to place somebody who always hates you or you hate somebody or you have unforgiveness in your heart. You're going to bring it out now for the Lord is waiting for you. He's not going to give you healing if you are not going to open yourself and place this situation. He's not going to forgive you if you are not going to forgive yourself, if you are not going to forgive your spouses or your children or your neighbors or relatives. You need to bring it to the Lord today for He is waiting and raise your hands as we sing it once again spirit of the living god fall afresh on us spirit of the living god fall afresh on us Now 
of seed melt us mold us fill us and use us spirit of the living God for Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living waters, never drying fountain. Comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Fill us with your power. And fill us with your power. Just live inside of me. Let's be in silence. Experiencing the touch of Jesus. The touch of his love that is passing by you that is healing you that is making you all this is the moment where you become one with your Jesus and Jesus one with you Kindly be seated. Raise the alarm. Raise the alarm. Praise the Lord. Yeah, before we could begin the message session, we'd like to share something very deeper and deeper. The Lord, how many of you believe that you are being blessed? Can we have a raise of hand? How many of you believe that you are being blessed? Praise the Lord. How many of you believe that Jesus, through you, is going to bless others? Because Jesus tells us, right, when you come to me, you have an experience and you take that experience and lock it in your lockers, in your cupboards or in your wardrobes. Or he says, take that experience and share it with the others. So today, if we are come here, we, we are going to 
take Jesus and share it with others. Before I could begin the beautiful message that the Lord has asked me to share with you, we shall take this song, which I always used to sing, and it's a great memory song, that she, the Savior is waiting to enter your heart. So even in the message, it's not only in the healing time, it's not only during the adoration time that you will only get healed. Even as the message broken by breaking of the word, we are healed by the word that touches us. Because the scripture tells us the word became, became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So, the Word of God became flesh and it is dwelling us. Let's all sing this hymn, The Savior is Waiting to Enter Your Heart. For the Savior is waiting to enter your heart. So why don't you let him come in Just nothing in this world To keep you apart What is your answer to him? And time after time He's waiting before and now he's waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door oh how he wants to come in now you are in a dance hall or a party hall and Jesus is your partner. So the music is playing. The mu everybody are set. And what is the next step that you need to take towards your bridegroom or, or, or your partner? So when the music is going on, what is the step that you need to take? It's to hold on to your partner's hands and say, I am with you and I am ready. Shall we dance? So Jesus is also holding on to your hand and telling you, are you ready to take one step? For I am taking 99 steps with you. If you'll take one step towards the Savior, my friend, you'll find His arms open wide. Dance with the Lord as the singing is singing. To receive Him, and all of your darkness will end within your heart seal above and time after time is waited before and now he is waiting again To see if you're willing to open the door Oh, ah, he wants to come in And oh, how he wants to come in Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! How many of you carry your Bibles? Now we have phones, so you can open your phones also. Wherever I go, I ask a question. Is this book very heavy? Is your phone very heavy? Without the phone, can we survive today? No chance. It's difficult. 
But without this book, we can survive. That is also no chance. But people are surviving without this book. They are surviving. They, ca they cannot be without the phone because every minute is an information or it's a call or it's a message to communicate. But this book, but with the phone, many arts, many families are broken. But with this book, many arts, many families are molded because the love of God. We shall take Psalms 147. Verse 3 onwards. Anybody can read? You have your Bibles or your phones? Yeah, verse 3. So he heals, thank you. He heals the broken hearted and binds up in my Bible is given and bandages their wounds. Jesus heals the broken hearted and binds and bandages their wounds. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What is this passage trying to tell us? What is this particular verse telling us during this season of Lent? We all are hurt not only Physically, we are hurt spiritually. Because we are hurt spiritually, we are not able to balance our physical moments. We're not able to balance our lives connected, or we are trying to go near to Jesus, or we are trying to be a new person, but still, we are weak. We fall, picturizing or imagining or re recollecting the weaknesses that we are being fallen. Praise the Lord. And today Jesus is trying to tell us that He is the only one who can heal the broken hearted. There is no other person, there's no other person in the Bible who can tell us that He has healed, but only Jesus, the word scripture in the Psalms tell us, that he heals the broken hearted and bandages their wounds. We are all hurt. We are all wounded. It may not be only physically, but it may be also emotionally we are wounded. Praise the Lord. Now, everyone has a cross in your house, right? And do we see any wounds on the cross, on Jesus' body? Can somebody say, what do you see? The nails, where are the nails put? At the? Okay, at the wrist of it. The head with the tons. And the feet. One more is missing. The side. Praise the Lord. Now, look at your hands. How many times are these hands used for a good cause or for a bad cause? And every time when you look at for a good cause, it means you are being blessing others or reaching out but every time when we do it we are again piercing Jesus back on the cross with his nails again and again our feet are we walking in the right direction are we going to help the needy are we going to help our families we may help everybody else in the world, but the real one meaning of the family is being missing. Psalm 
So, are, are we walking in the direction? And the moment we are, we find we also fall. Jesus fell so many times in his journey to Calvary. Many, there was once a person who asked me a question while I was traveling one day. I met a person in a church and he said, if Jesus has fallen so many times, why should I fall? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a very beautiful, unique question. When Jesus, as you have said, taken my pain, taken all my suffering because he loved me, then why am I still falling? Why is my body pain again? The answer to that is very simple. I smiled at that person and said, Am I always going to be in pre-KG? Am I always going to look at a sliding board or a swing and say, Wow, it's a beautiful swing or it's a beautiful sliding board? Or am I going to go and experience the ride? Or am I going to experience? So when I'm starting to swing, I may lose my balance or I do not know how to swing so naturally I will fall. So when I start learning something, oh this is the way that I hold a swing or even if a cycle riding, when I'm starting to ride I need to balance. Praise the Lord. So we need to balance our life spiritually. We need to balance our life on the journey, the pathway that Jesus is leading us. A question comes. What is the topic on he yields the broken hearted connectors to cycling? Praise the Lord. Every action has its love. Now, after I fall when driving a cycle or in the swing, will I leave it off? Will I say, no, this is not meant for me? No. I continue to climb back or to cycle back and next time I will not fall. Praise the Lord. It's the same way in life, in marriages and families, there are problems, there are different ups and downs. It means that if a, if a family is having a problem with each other and if the problem is exceeding too much, I begin to say, Divide or separate or leave it. Or instead, I understand. I begin to experience, okay, is it my fault? I begin to realize and adjust and make my life with the family as one. The same way in our spiritual journey, there are 100% faults. There are 100% not easy route, but he says, right, the Bible tells us, the journey is, the road is very narrow. The road is narrow. And coming to Jesus is not very comfortable. It is, you pass one test, two tests, and the more you get closer, it becomes easier. Praise the Lord. To go to get that closeness with the Lord, one day you'll be, like for example, all of us attend retreat. After a week, we are superstars of prayer. We meet somebody, we greet somebody and say, praise the Lord. But after two weeks or after three weeks, when we, something hits us on the head or something goes wrong, and when we meet somebody else who comes and says, praise the Lord, sister, or praise the Lord, brother, we'll, ah, okay, praise the Lord. Our tone, our energy, our everything becomes zero. Why? Whom did we go for the retreat to? For Jesus, right? We went to experience an encounter with him. Praise the Lord. But why? After two weeks, we have become dried up leaves again. It looks like summer is come back. Spring is gone. The greatest moment of seeing the flowers coming out is not there, but we become dried up. 
and we wait to go for another retreat, right? And when we come back again, we are fine again. After two weeks, we are gone back. Praise the Lord. I'm not letting you down. I'm not going to tell you, don't go for a retreat. I'm here to tell you, be the retreat in your heart. Be the retreat, the treat in your families. The moment you are connected to the power that is Jesus Christ, it means your power cannot have a failure. Many of our houses may have power cuts, but Jesus' power never has a failure. It means that he gives us assurance, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Why? For I have carved your names on the palm of my hand. Praise the Lord. So, Jesus is such a loving God that he tells us that he heals the broken hearted and he bandages their wounds. Now what is the word wounds come to mind when we think it's not only a fall or injury. What is the wounds? The wounds of depression. The wounds of sickness. Some 22 years or 24 years ago when I went to Mangalore on a Lenten uh, to do adoration, there was a person who came for counseling to a priest and he asked the priest one question, why is my spiritual wounds not ill? Connected to the same topic today, when Jesus says in Psalms 147 verse 3, that he bandages my wounds or he heals my wounds. Why is it not ill? The priest directed the person to me since he was a little busy in counseling. So he asked me, go meet Brother Dominic there. He will be in the adoration chapel sitting down there. And he came and said, brother, you are too young. And how do I tell you how if you are so young, and how are you going to give me an answer? Praise the Lord. I said, I don't give people answers. The answer is only Jesus. No man or woman can give you and say, I have answers. But only Jesus says, I am the answer. He is the answer of every situation, whatever may difficulty. So that man began to have a conversation with me and he said, okay. I said, before your conversation, let us be in silence and look at the Blessed Sacrament as you have the Blessed Sacrament right in front of you, here itself. And I'm going to share with you, do not get distracted, I told him, Jesus is speaking to you. After 30 minutes, he got distracted and he distracted me also and he said give me the answer I said quiet the answers on the way after the next 30 minutes he walked out of the chapel and he came back in the evening and he said the priest asked after the retreat anybody has a testimony this man puts his hand up and said I have a testimony he was like okay because the priest knew this family very well, the parish priest knew, and he knew him that he's always a person who grumbles and who loves to find fault in the church and points out others' fault. Praise the Lord. So he was well known in that parish, a small parish there, for a person of determination. What he wants, he gets. So he came up and said, I learned how Jesus has yielded my wound. Everyone were like, he was a person who had a problem of bone cancer. And he went to so many doctors, he said, and they said, you need to do the schema therapy. He did, but still in his mind and in his heart, fear and worriedness came. I cannot achieve what I am supposed to achieve. I have 
so much of wealth but what am i going to do with it when i have no more because the doctor said i cannot give you assurance but he said this morning i went to the adoration chapel and i met this person brother dominic and he said quiet listen to jesus and the moment he i tried to distract him he said but when i looked at his eyes closed a ray of light from the blessed sacrament fell on him and he heard a voice in him saying you are healed i have healed you fully and then this verse came psalms 147 because i have already bandaged your wounds that means the voice did not heal him physically but healed him spiritually and he went back with that so many people after he gave an half half and half message so after mass people came so you are healed of cancer you are healed of that bone cancer so why not you bring a testification and come and share with us he says no i am healed of my spiritual weakness that i was always questioning god and today i am healed with strength to say you are my everything you are my all for in that ness this was 22 years ago and after 2 years or 4 years that i met the person again and he said i am ill of cancer too brother because of my self control because of my will power that i stopped grumbling at jesus that i started to think more positive more practically and claiming the word of god saying that you have healed me not now but 2000 years ago the scripture tells us that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised so he kept on repeating the scripture in the adoration chapel for 30 minutes that you have taken upon myself the chastisement and by your stripes i am healed praise the lord that gave him strength those words gave him strength when he repeated the words for half an hour 30 minutes today he is perfectly fine even the doctor said not possible he, he accepted he was going to die before he was afraid that he was going to die because the moment of acceptance comes means that i know i am going to my lord i know i am going to be with my jesus but at the beginning that person had fear not knowing what to do where he is going to go so the moment we know that even death even at the point of death we have somebody we will never fear that at all praise the lord praise the lord are you all resting are you all sleeping i think it's i know some of it's already 12 o'clock it's a bit lunch time but let us experience more what the lord is trying to tell us during this retreat we love one song during this moment that the lord i was sharing you the first uh, sharing about that courage that inspiration words that the lord has given us so jury let us remember that he has healed the broken hearted and set the captives free you are being healed that's why you are here and you are here with the lord Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all my fear is gone. Because I love me, 
holds my future and life is but a living just because he lived one more time because he lived we can face tomorrow because he lived all my fear is gone because i know Life is but a living just because he lived. Those who would like to hear the confessions, the priest is available in the room at the side of us. Let's close our eyes for a moment as we get to the second point of the message. So the first point which has been made is that he heals the broken hearted and sets the captives free. But when we read in Psalms 147 verse it says, he bandages your wounds. And you can read the second verse, the fourth verse of that. He decides the number of the stars and calls each one by name. Praise the Lord. We shall re recollect this wonderful verse. He decides the number. It means he decides the number of stars and he calls them by names. You are a star of the kingdom of God and that's why you are being called here by name. So if he's calling John, if he's calling Anthony, if he's calling Paul, if he's calling Mary, he has called them today because he wanted them. He has fixed an appointment with you. It is not you fixing appointment with Jesus, but Jesus has fixed an appointment with you because he wants to share with you. He wants to tell you, this is your moment that you are being called as a disciple. You're being called to share, to bring witnesses to him, to bear witnesses to him in your families. Praise the Lord. So, he has called you by name. It means you are special in the eyes of God. Again, there's a testimony which I begin to recollect. Many, many years ago, I have started walking with the Lord for the last 32 years and this is my 33rd year with Jesus. So in my early days, I only used to lead praise and worship and adoration, mostly only adoration. So that's why the priest used to take me out for only adoration. I came in a past in a place in Villapurum, a church there, where the priests used to go after their retreats and go and bless their houses or do house visitation. So when I went for a visitation, the priest said, today he is not feeling well. So you go and pray and bless the family or speak and mingle with them. So I went and met a family there who was the happiest family in the place. They were always joyful. They were always, what do you say, anything ready to do for the church or for the priest or anything to do. So I told them, I just need a glass of water. And can I wash my answer to take me to the restroom inside me as I went. They said, yeah, you go left, you go right. It's the restroom. Make yourself comfortable. This is your house. So I went there. As I was passing a door, 
my heart an arrow turned to that door i was about to open the door the wife of the housekeeper said no brother this this is not this is only a store room do not open the door i said no but something inside me tells me there is somebody special there no 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 not special nobody is there it's just all our old clothes all our what do you say junkyard all these other artic utensils are kept there it's all why do you want to go bless that room no need in my heart i smiled at that lady and said smile on the outside of your face but tears are dropping in the inside of your heart that lady said brother what do you mean i said the lord shows me there is your heart is not in you but it is in that room praise the lord she opened the door and i seen a daughter who was inside that room she was not normal she was a person unnormal like a handicapped or you call it dyslexic child who used to get boisterous and throw things around so they kept her in that place i said is this junkyard is this old clothes is this utensils not been used your loved one is there in this garbage around you she immediately fell down and tears dropped from her eyes and said brother we are only outside joyful what every day me and my husband kneel down and we are praying for the last 18 years that this child that god heal we are doing so much of social work so much of activities in the church so much of donations we give but why is god's year taking its time then the husband came to that room oh my god he said you have entered this room this is was a secret that even the parish did not know or the parish priest even did not know about it but you i said no my brother no the lord has given me as i was passing by that love is needed to go only where there is love the thorns are inside the garbage is inside but because of the thorns there there is love in our heart you are carrying your thorns in your heart when you open the door of your house till you enter it back so you are keeping your struggle so immediately we went in the room first thing i sat down they were saying no it's dirty it's been about 3 4 years that we have not cleaned we just give the food or feed her because she doesn't know what she's doing i said first thing we shall tidy the place because jesus wants to enter inside praise the lord then we i said all your hands with your daughter and immediately the lord gave me a word stating that you have grumbled and hurt me the moment she was born she was beautiful after a couple of months she became like this and you called a uh, why are you god that gives me such a thing like this you have hurted my feelings god has feelings but god was always there with them and that is why he said i have answered the prayers of your cries and you keep on still grumbling and complaining i said the lord wants you now to accept your child the father of the house the man of the house 
did not even one percent accept this child as his daughter. The mother every day kept in and cried, asking God, when is this going to end? Now or when? So when we held our hands and we prayed, the power of God just, I told them, the Lord wants you to say, I submit and I accept the situation proudly. My doors of my house will always be open and this child will be in the openness of everyone. The husband could not accept the fact next day was the retreat, final day of the retreat and the adoration. After we praying, I went back and next day morning, evening when we were thing, they brought their daughter, the full church was shocked to see the child after 18 years long. And the child started to see ventilation. The child started to see light, which was in the darkness. And they came to me afterwards and the, they said, Brother, the healing word that we can give is, we accepted our situation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For a couple of years, two, three years, the child started to improve. And today, one day, that person says that that dyslexy or disability child, his daughter, he calls her by name, she is perfectly fine. Because from that day of acceptance, the healing started to take place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We come back to our scriptures stating that He heals the broken, He bandages their wounds. And then the number of stars, He decides. And He calls it by name. Whatever may be, my dear people of God, whatever may be our situations, whatever may be our circumstances, we need to accept that Jesus is our God. Is we need to accept that we are children of the Father. That is why our problems, our sickness, our circumstances do not leave us because we are not ready to accept with thanksgiving. Did God give us sickness? No. We called it and we caused it. If we had to grumble at Jesus or if we had to grumble at God, then we would not have been sick. Our minds would not have registered because it says every knee shall bow <laughs> and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is to the glory of the so everything you do in the name of Jesus we need to glorify the Father. Do we do it? Even do we do it with our own houses, our own families? Do we accept each other 100%? God accepted us. That's why he sent Jesus to die so that we will have that attitude, we will have that love flowing to each other. So this is point number two of our retreat session. That The first point is the healing of our wounded hearts. The second point, he will call you by name are you ready to accept who you are? For you are the image and likeness of who? Your neighbor? Some friend? You are the image and likeness of? Jesus of God, the Father. So we'll take a song. This song was... You know, one of the, a child that went to church one day and asked Jesus, 
what do you want for your birthday every time i ask what do i want for my birthday but when it's your birthday do we ask jesus what and immediately the child got a message i want you i want you in my heart to be there to play with you every moment to teach you about the sun the moon and the stars the beautiful butterflies that fly across the sky and the birds so jesus wants us to be like children and as we become like children we could easier experience the love of jesus to others god is so good god is so good god is so good he's so good to me clap your hands god is so good god is so so good to me he took my sin he took my sin and he took my sin he so good to me and now i am free so good to me he so good to me praise the lord praise the lord are you hungry for jesus not for lunch are you hungry for jesus yes or no so let's continue with this the next verse the next two verses of psalms 147 it tells us in verse 4 i mean verse 6 it tells us he raises the humble but crushes the wicked to the ground he raises the humble and crushes the wicked to the ground and then we see in verse 11 he takes pleasure in those who honors him and those who trust in him is constant love praise the lord praise the lord so what was the first point that i was making in psalms 47 verse 3 the second point he, the number of stars and he calls them by so now let's put both together that i was lost but now i am found i was a outsider or i was in the church i was born a catholic i was always doing everything that the catholic church teaches us i did not know jesus then where is heaven for me then how many of us have mansions in heaven or how many of us know that a street in heaven is named in your name why are you all looking at me as i have come from heaven and i'm telling you yes there are mansions or i'm come from heaven and saying there are streets in your name how many of you know that you'll go to heaven so difficult it is uh, wavering like the ocean the sea goes just now what do we have we shall go back to where we started he heals the wounded broken hearted so he's already healed you right 
it means healing is not only physically i said the spiritual healing is in the eucharist it is you and your jesus the spiritual healing is nothing that when i receive communion it means not amen and it's over no it's i become one with jesus and jesus becomes one with me and it's not over still in the church it's how i take that jesus in me i told you and share it remember we shall share is love so i take jesus and i share it with my family how am i being going to so definitely if i take jesus i have a place in heaven yeah yes or no or no no or yes or yes or no if i the moment it says every knee shall bow and and every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord the glory of the father jesus and i become one then who am i to jesus then then i become a son and you become a daughter of god so we are a royal family so 100% i have a room in heaven or i have a bungalow in heaven which bungalow do you want one ground or two grounds or three acres or two acres? left to you the more you love the lord the more you accept and save your family and save each one soul and bring them to the lord you are being rewarded remember we are waiting to be getting our rewards and jesus is also listening and watching over you and me there's a famous hymn that says softly and tenderly jesus is calling just and he's always calling us to him so there was once incident where i met a couple a newly wedded couple some many 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 years ago in an advent retreat not in a lenten retreat but in an advent retreat but i'm sharing you because it connects to the word of humbleness to the word and this couple got married and they started to be their journey the priest said yes i do and he said for good or for i think those who are married knows their vows right or you forgot your vows that you have made for good and for biryani right no i mean sorry for good and for bad in good times and in bad times in sadness joy in sickness and in i think we all remember this state so this couple started their journey after a month they started coming to the priest for the his journey the priest said i finish blessing you that means you too have to live your life but every day you are sitting in my office and every day you want counseling that moment i happen to enter there in that particular church and the priest said you have come i have a new solution to you the lord needs you i said yeah bring them to me so finally the couple came to me and said our journey began one month ago i said wow that's amazing you have just begun your journey i said then who's the bridegroom between both of you the couple looked at me and said what do you mean brother I said no you are to one but in a family we see the husband and the wife but in our catholic in our christian family we see that jesus is the bridegroom when the husband and wife are there praise the lord so i find the answer is we two become one that means only one not two or is it two is it two or is it one see you're like confusing me itself now i become angry also like you so in a ma- christian marriage living the two become the scripture says right a man should leave his father and mother and go and join with his wife and they two become one but the sc- beauty of it that the lord is telling me he has to be the second person among the two he stands the middle 
of the family praise the lord so when you put jesus inside it means i told the wife that young girl you need to complain to jesus and he will give you answer and i told the boy you complain to jesus and he'll give you answer so there's no two of you are fighting with each other or keeping your egos to each other or whatever is it you need to tell it to jesus and the moment you tell it to jesus hold your hand and say your vows and jesus holds your hand and brings you back to the vow how many of us what do you say experience this vow that the lord has you take it only by words but not the word to be molded inside our life so this couple tried it for one month they tried it for two months finally they reached their first wedding anniversary and they had one great party where they said we should invite brother dominic and the parish priest these are the two culprits there so let me call them for our first anniversary as we the prayer begin the parish priest finished the prayer and everything the bridegroom i mean the husband gave a message he said looking at the world outside we would have departed but looking at the word the word of god inside we cannot depart because i am the captain and she is the wise captain she, i am the heart and she is the tail whatever i do we both have to take we are in a vessel called the vessel of love of jesus and we are sealed to it that we have to sail according to the wind that the lord tells us to go and today we have sailed the journey of one year that no matter whoever comes in between we will never depart because all that we have learnt immediately he looks at his bride and he says she will tell you the rest of the story so when she came to conclude the story of their uh, one year of relationship all that she said is every moment in times of confusion in times of struggles all i looked at one word somebody is watching me and i find that somebody when i looked at my husband's eyes i seen jesus when he wants to say something whenever he looks into my eyes he sees jesus and that is how our journey was for that praise the lord and never again we will have an ego that comes up in it now why i'm bringing up this thing of oneness do we see the same thing the eyes of jesus in our families we have been many years married we have grandchildren do we see the eyes of love and mercy in our grandchildren in our children do we see why is it we do not see straight away we are ready to blame it the children are not responsible in manglo in 2008 when i went to a family retreat there i found the priest sharing one particular point he says everyone will agree with me at this a family that prays together stays together everyone agree but i am going to change it around the priest says a family who lives together will no longer die praise the lord because they will always live the fullness of their life many of the things that come to us during this moment is how humble are we how humble are we to situation if we look at jesus' journey on the cross he could have retaliated but he did not retaliate he just humbled himself and went why why because he loved you and 
me so much so he humbled himself by taking up the cross for our sake and he gave up his royalty just he wanted you and me to live praise the lord praise the lord so the priest said this if i live together i will always live forever before we end our session now we'll be having the benediction i would like to share something important a great experience that i in all these years of 32 years about myself it is my experience my work the lord poured out his blessings the moment i asked a question to god speak to me i don't want to be like normal catholics that enjoy themselves coming to church partying but i want to be a different if you are not going to call me by name and if you are not going to show me who you are i will no more come to the church because it's just too boring it's there is no feeling there is no something i did not know i had this 32 years ago so one day as i was going to get ready to have a shower i heard a voice calling my name dominic i thought okay maybe my own imaginations are calling my name because i asked so my own imagination is calling my name not once but three times and the third time it says come to porta and the porta is nothing but a divine retreat center in kerala and that was my first thing which i did not even know where is divine or i was a reserved category a different species among all of y'all who never even spoke to anybody i was that reserved today i maybe a big 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 jabber mouth in front of you talking so much i even can talk for two days or three days continuously also because the lord has given me 32 years to walk and this is the 33rd year with the lord praise the lord so he called me to kerala for a retreat and he, i agreed without knowing which place it is on this planet but i went of obedience as i landed there it was beautiful they gave you super food at that time i do not know now but to keep it short and sweet that was my only retreat that i went till today i did not take medicines again and again for diabetic or for sugar or for anything or going again for healing the touch of the lord once is the touch forever as the priest said right if i live i will live forever if i live the fullness of to be like jesus i will always be like him i will not fall i will never stumble even if any block or obstacle comes in my way or even if i'm having if a person says i'm having a sickness i will not look at the sickness as a problem i will look at the sickness as something and keep it aside for i have my medicines there where i can take it wherever i want the greatest medicine is the blood of the lamb that fell from the side of jesus so at that moment i was very happy with the food i was very happy i told god you should have told me this earlier i would have brought more people and come so they will come for retreat for eating and sleeping good food you can put on weight and this you can have a wonderful time as but i still on the third day i became bored the lord may be bored because i started to enjoy too much so whenever we enjoy too many things also the lord puts a stoppage too much is too bad for health so it made me to say it's enough and when on the fourth day the adoration day i told lord i need you to show me your plan your destination for me the lord said open yourself and i open myself and during the adoration 
when Jesus was lifted up, the rays of power fell into me and I was down. And when I opened my eyes, I was still thinking, who is seeing that I fell down? But when I seen everybody was down, praise the Lord. So no one made fun of me. And I opened my eyes and I looked into the monster and I seen Jesus lying on Mary's lap. What a beautiful picture of the first vision that I knew that was my first vision that I had. And the vision of listening to the voice of the Lord came before even I can go to Porta by the call that he has called me. And the third thing I asked him was, how deeper is your love? Show me and direct me where do I need to go? And the Lord immediately the next day of the retreat was the final day where the priest gave us the host in our hands before the elevation time. So we had to take the host and place and submit ourselves on the plate there. And as the elevation was beginning, I see a white person from the altar coming among the crowds of people and standing in front of the so bright that I could not even see. All I knew, my Jesus is come in front of me and, he, and I could hear the voice saying, he lifts up the bread and says, this is my body. Eat of it. And I opened my mouth and I ate. And then he lifts the cup and says, this is my blood. Drink of it. And I drank. Till today, I am able to taste the blood of Jesus when I am sharing with you and also the flesh that is in my throat. And immediately, a flash of the passion of the Christ nailing of the hands and the feet, a vision that I got, and the blood just fell on me. And a message came saying, you have been redeemed by my blood. You have been redeemed to go and proclaim that time I knew what is my calling to the youngsters, to the youth, to families, and to all in need. I've, after a while, I asked the Lord in one of the adoration chapels that I normally go, I am not married, and how will a family listen to somebody who do, doesn't experience the problems that they go through? How will I counsel them, or how do I may give them a solution? The Lord smiled at me and said, you have been married to me and I have been married with you and it is not you who is going to speak but it is I who is going to speak to you. Praise the Lord. And after a while, the Lord blessed me with a person in my life today. We are married for the last 15 years my wife Poppy and we have four children where we are blessed and continuing to do the work just from the time of our marriage the Lord straight away after our marriage two, day, two months the Lord gave us a message to go to a place called Narsingpuram which is here in Mount Road St. Anthony's Church and we started building the faith of the church into those families we have reached out there for six years four to six years that we were there helping those families to experience the love of God. And when we had a night ritual in the nursing Puram, that's the night which was pouring every rain. There were about 20 people who were gathered for the night ritual. And the next day, we heard the news that our lady appeared in someone's house in the form of ginger. So if you see the ginger Mary in Nasingpuram, that's the area, it is the Lord has put his mark of blessing wherever people are blessed. So 
it's not only that particular thing that he has put imprinted it but also in your hearts and today we are a family ministry in madhavaram that we are reaching out in sebastian's church and other parts of the places where we have it's called a personal encounter with jesus family ministry called you and me where we reach out in different topics different uh, for youngsters elders as our journey this this year makes seven years that we are big uh, our journey as a family ministry full fledged from madhavaram onwards advise we are earlier 15 years and this 28 of this month keep us in prayer as we are closing of our it's our wedding anniversary on that day for 15 years that the lord has journeyed with us so all of you are blessed to be with us to bless us as we continue and last week we had our pilgrimage to five churches and where we have experienced many of you are here some of you have not been with us but continue to do pray for us and come for other unm programs as we are journeying to bring one soul at a time so if we bring you you bring another person to the feet of the church where jesus is waiting now shall we all kneel down as we have the adoration the benediction that is taking going to place now father we are the sacrament have left as a memorial of a passion grant us we pray so to rever the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may be always experience in ourselves the fruit of your redemption who live and reign with you with the god the father in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Kindly be seated. Now we'll be having lunch break. So lunch will be provided and we will be back by 1.30 where we begin the way of the cross. We'll be having the way of the cross at 1.30. After the way of cross, we'll be having intercession with the Divine Mercy Chaplet and then followed with the Holy Eucharistic. During the time of the Chaplet and Mercy and uh, while the way of the cross, kindly do prepare yourself for the Holy Eucharist by going for confession. That is the greatest sacrament which is present freely where Jesus is waiting for you to heal you the wounded that the wounds that have inside. So thank you. Oh, yes, Father. Yeah. So we'll all go outside for on top. The steps outside. We will all go for lunch.